let's say. So um, how should we approximate this temperature profile? Well, there's actually many choices, and this is where the finite element method gets very complicated sometimes. Um, so you can approximate it any way you want is the short answer, as long as it's got n degrees of freedom. But for the simplest finite element codes that most people work with on a daily basis, that choice is piecewise linear. So if, our, if the exact solution for the temperature profile is some, let's say, continuous one-dimensional curve, typically what we'll try to do is um, represent it as a piecewise linear polynomial. So what that means is that basically there are a bunch of nodes um, that are where we would like to actually get, at least at some specific points within our domain, we would like to identify the actual temperature um, of the exact solution at those locations and then interpolate in between with a linear profile. Um, so the, that typical choice is a piecewise linear profile. So for example, if I'm solving the diffusion equation and I'm given two boundary conditions, let's say temperature at A and temperature at B, um, what I'm looking for is to basically solve, so in this picture I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight intervals, which means there are seven unknowns that sit in between, um, so t T1 through T7, let's say. I'd like to identify what the values of T1 and T7 are, um, through T7 are. Um, so let me put that a slightly different way. So I, I think that graphically we can understand that like this is a pretty good way to interpolate the solution and approximate the temperature profile. But um, I'm going to write it a different way because it turns out to be helpful. So what, what I mean by that piecewise linear approximation is that I am going to write the temperature of x, like in this domain, my approximate solution is going to be some coefficients t sub n, so like the coefficient t1, t2, t3, t4, t5, t6, t7, times some basis functions. So for example, the basis function, um, let, me, let me call this PN, p1 of x would be like a little, I'll call this a tent function. It's, uh, you know, basically goes from 0 to one at the location where we're evaluating temp the temperature at one and then back down to zero so that there's no overlap with any of the other functions. So you'll see that basically I can build up the temperature profile. So this is a, clearly a linear temperature profile. Um, there's no like parabolic stuff or third order stuff. So when I add all these things up, I'm guaranteed to get a linear profile everywhere um, and I'm guaranteed that if I use these basis functions, or these tent functions, that when I evaluate the total function, so including all of these terms, um, at the location where one of these nodes is, I'm guaranteed to recover the exact value because none of the other tent functions are non-zero at that location. So you'll notice that there are these other fu tent functions, but they're all equal to zero. Um, if I'm at one of the node locations. So, um, you know, basically this allows you to use independent basis functions called test uh, tent functions to, um, to build up a linear piecewise polynomial. Um, we have to handle the edges a little bit differently because, um, because we do. Um, so for example, if I want to include the fact that the temperature at the left edge is equal to TA, what I need is another special function that's zero, you know, at all the other node locations, but is equal to one at the location of TA. So I, I'll build a special type of tent. It's not really, it's like a half a tent function to handle the boundary conditions here. So um, if I, so in this scenario, imagine that I give you the temperature at A the temperature at B, and then we are solving for these unknowns T of N. That's our goal. Um, so that is typically pretty much how the finite element works if you're solving for like a first order, using first order polynomials. Um, there are scenarios in which you can construct these things to be like parabolas. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but the most typical choice is a piecewise linear polynomial is our approximation for the T of